Hello students. Now our today's topic is message circuit switching and packet switching. So let us discuss what exactly the meaning of message switching and the packet switching. So first of all we will discuss that what is mean by message switching. So message switching is nothing but the method that was developed as an alternative to circuit switching. In last slides we have discussed some points about the circuit switching and this circuit switching or message switching this is the very basic methods which is the alternative to this circuit switching before the advent of packet switching. So we can say that the message switching is the basic of packet switching. Message switching is a connection less technique in which the entire message is routed from the source node to the destination node by one hop at a time which is called as hop by hop system. The distinguishing feature of message switching are stop and forward network. Sorry, store and forward network. The message is not discarded in case of non availability of the next hook. Rather, it is stored in a queue and is retransmitted when the required route is available. So, this is called store and forward network. For example, you can see this is the diagram of message switching. Here, the sender wants or we can say that source wants to send the data to the destinations. So, first of all, the message 1 which is received by this node which we call, it a, which we call it as a switch. So, what this switch will do? It will receive this message and it will first see the available paths and until the path is available or free, the message will be stored in switch 1. Once the path is free, then this message will be processed. So that's why it is called as store and forward techniques. Next one is that message delivery. The entire information is wrapped in a single message and transferred from the source to the destination node as a message with a definite destination address in the header. In this technique, dedicated path is not established between the sender and receiver. In circuit switching, the dedicated path was established before sending the message from sender to the receiver. But in this technique, message switching techniques, the dedicated path will not establish between sender and receiver. The message is appended with the respective destination address. Then message switching offers a dynamic routing as the message is routed through the intermediate nodes depending on the data present in the message. So the process of message switching is in message switching each message is regarded as an individual unit. This what? Each message which will send by the sender, that message is considered as a complete unit. Destination address is added to that message before sending. Sender will add the destination address and the message is delivered entirely to the next available intermediate switching node. The intermediate node is <coughs> store the message and after doing the re requisite checks like destination address, transmission error etc. delivers the message to the next available intermediate nodes. The process continues with the store and forward techniques until the message reaches its destination. So this Diagram represents the delivery of two separate messages that is message 1 and message 2 
from the same source using different routes to each the same destination. Next technique is packet switching. Actually here packet switching technique means where the message is transferred in a single go. The message is partitioned into tiny piece and those pieces are independently transferred. Means as shown in the figure, this sender wants to send the message to the next node. Then before sending the message, the message are divided into the number of small units which we will call it as a packet. The small pieces of message are called as the packet and a unique number is assigned to every packet to identify their order at the receiving end. The transfer of packet is done by finding the most possible shortest path. Reassembling of all the received packet is done at the receiver end in an appropriate order. Means here the sender will send the packets to for example receiver X then before sending the message is divided into number of packet and each and every packet provided a sequence number. So when it received by the intermediate node so all packets will travel in a different routes. So it may be possible that at the receiver site the packet will not receive in a sequence number. So the receiver will rearrange the packet according to the sequence number. So there are two services which is provided by packet switching network. First one is the datagram switching. Second one is virtual circuit switching. So this is the difference between datagram switching and virtual circuit switching. Actually the datagram switching is the connectionless service where connection is not established before sending the data from node A to node B. Means whatever the packets are there, the packets are directly sending towards the receiver side and all packets will take a different routes. But in virtual circuit switching, the logical connection is established before sending the packets. So it is a connection oriented. So we can say that it uses the 50% concept of circuit switching techniques. Means before sending the packets, first of all the connection will be established between sender A and the receiver. So in datagram switching, second point is no reservations. As it is a connectionless service, whatever the resources available that will be allocated to that packets. So there is, there will be no reservations in datagram switching and in virtual circuit switching, reservation is there because first of all connection need to establish between sender and receiver. Third point is out of order. So in datagram switching, it may be possible that receiver may receive every packets or receiver may receive the packets which are the out of order packets because every packets will transfer to the different routes. But in virtual circuit switching, as the connection is dedicated path is there, so the packet will be received by the receiver that will be in a same order. Next is in datagram switching, high overhead, overhead is there because every packets will travel through a different routes. That's why in every packets need to install the header. So it considered as a high overhead. But in virtual circuit switching, as dedicated path is there, so every packet will travel to that same path. So in each and every packet there is no need to add the header. That's why it is a less overheaded. 
Now in datagram, next is packet loss is more. It may be possible that any traffic in the route or any congestion in the route packet may lost. But in virtual circuit switching, packet loss is very low. Next is this datagram switching used in internet and virtual circuit switching techniques used in asynchronous transfer mode, frame relay, etc. Datagram switching circuit the cost is less. Here, virtual circuit switching cost is more. Next point is efficiency is more in datagram switching. Why efficiency is more? Because resources are allocated only when there are packets to be transferred. If source send a packet and there is a delay of a few minutes, before another packet can be seen, the resources can be reallocated during these minutes for other packets from other resources. That's why the efficiency is more in datagram switching. As in case virtual switching, efficiency is less. Next is delay. Delay in datagram switching circuit is more because Although there are no setup and tear down phase, each packet may experience a wait at a switch before it is forwarded. In addition, since not all packets in a message necessarily travel through the same switches, the delay is not uniform for the packets of a message. That's why delay is more in datagram switching circuit. Whereas, there is a no waiting time because the dedicated path is between sender and receiver is established in virtual circuit switching. That's why delay is less. So, this is all about the message switching and the packet switching. Thank you.